So this is the RFID slash keypad entry system off Amazon or eBay or wherever your source is. The model number on it is AD2000-M. You have an option for a keypad entry or an RFID reader. This comes with a bag of these little keychain ones, which are fine. But since I do other RFID related stuff, I actually have these cards. So this card is actually set up to work with this right now. So the way that these things work is I actually like these systems because they're modular. So you can upgrade the keypad, you can change out the uh, exit button on the inside, you can change out the locking mechanism. The one that comes with it is just an electromagnet. So basically, uh, well there's the control box and on the inside there's an exit button. So this is basically the keypad without any security fe features. You basically push it and it turns off the electromagnet. The electromagnet goes to the door and hits that metal plate so you can't I mean with a swift kick and a tiny magnet like this you could totally probably get it to disconnect from each other um, but if you had a better system where it actually had the retracting latch as part of the system and it wouldn't open like that uh, that would be that would be better this I again this is just like a hundred plus year old door on an old house interior door completely for fun here there's no real security here there's nothing valuable in there or whatever uh, but this uh, works where as soon as the correct code or the button is pushed it sends a signal to the that main box in there and temporarily turns off the electromagnet so put the card up to it the magnet shuts off and I don't know if you could hear the little click or not but there's a small hole where you can adjust the time that the magnet is actually shut off. And this thing actually has a spring-loaded little tab here where it pushes away from the electromagnet just that little bit so it can stay open if for some reason you're putting your keys back in your pocket or whatever. So this thing also has a keypad option where the default code on this is 1234. So you can see that the light turned green, I inputted the right code. So if I put in the wrong code, it tells me no, go away, wrong code. So I can either use the card or the code and get in that way. So what's nice about this system also is it has the RFID, it has the keypad, uh, which you have the four digit settable code to enter. It can be whatever you want it to be, but also it has the ability to add or delete uh, either these cards or these fobs. Now every time you add one, you have to assign it a three digit number. And I just assigned this card 536 since that's the last three numbers on here. So as you can see right now, it works. But let's say that I gave this card to somebody, they're no longer welcome, I don't want them to have access, and they just will not give the card back. Do I have to reset the whole system and uh, start from scratch? No, I don't. What I can do is I can use the administration code. So pound 881122. Now I've entered the programming mode. I pushed seven because I want to delete a card. And then the card number was 536 that I want to delete. And that should be done. So if I did it right, this card should no longer work. Nope, the card no longer works. And I did not need this card present in order to delete it from the system. So now if I want to add a card, similar system, you use your administration code. I'm going to also delete or uh, assign this card number 536 just to keep it simple. So pound, administration code, 881122. Green lights come on, you know you're in programming mode. So five, because I want to add. And then five, three, six is the card number I'm assigning to it. Five, three, six. I'm going to swipe it so it can recognize that card and give it that number. And then I'll push pound to exit back out. So now this card should work. There we go. 
and we can erase it one more time just to say somebody ran off with this card or I lost it or whatever. So pound 881122 as the administration code, which you can change. You can change the admin code and you can change the entry code. So 7 to delete. And if I want to delete this card from this option and I have the card, I can just swipe the card so it knows that's the card I want to delete. Then we exit out of programming mode and this card should no longer work. There. So now we'll just add it again just because I need to. So 8811225, 5 to add, uh, 536, swipe, and then we'll exit out of programming mode, and this card should work. There we go. So now we're good. So as you can see with these little fobs, every one of them has an individual number engraved on it. So, ooh, this one's actually 365. Pure coincidence there. Um, let me grab my uh, RFID reader and I will show you that this is actually the number programmed to the card. I forewarn you, the thing on the voice on this thing is crazy annoying. Card. Okay, so we'll put this, as you can see, the number is 6. 720365 on it. We'll put it up to the back to read it and I'll push scan. Read success. Card number is 6720365. So that's the actual RFID number for this fob. If we grab this one for instance that has 13446536 Push scan. Read success. Card number is one three four four six five three six. So the easiest way for me just to remember everything is to just assign the three digit number as the last three on the card. And that's just what I'm gonna do. So putting this away. Sometimes these don't have the number engraved on them. Sometimes they do. If they don't, I'll scan it. If they do, I'll use it. We're going to add it, so we're going to do pound admin code, which is 881122, then 5 to add, then 365, because that's the last three on here, then we'll scan it. So now that's added to the system, and we can push pound to exit. So now this should be programmed to the system. Sweet. We're good. One more time. That's good. So now, if I lose it or somebody runs off with it, we have the number. All we got to do is keep track of it, log it down to whoever has this uh, 365. Now we just go pound 881122 for admin code, 7 to delete, and then 365 is now deleted, and we'll exit this. So if they come back later and they're not wanted, and you don't want them to have access, it no longer works. So there, this thing actually does work. It's all upgradable. I would like to eventually get a latch that uh, is integrated into a door, but for this application, it's really not necessary. There's no security here. This is a hundred year old door, tiny little magnet, but I like it. I think it could be useful for the right application, but again, if you know how to defeat these systems or if you know how to install them, they're not hard to get by. So the downside for an electromagnetic locking system is if you don't have a backup battery, if there's ever a power outage or somebody decides to mess with you, they can literally go uh, flip a breaker, short out an outlet, do something like that, and that lock no longer has power, and they literally, now the door's open. You know, stick a fork in an outlet and get into a secure facility. Sometimes it's that simple. If you want to change the entry password, you would start with the admin password. We'll just type in the code, just kind of reset it. So we'll go pound 881122. We're at green. To reset the entry password, our prompt is three. So then we can choose a new one. Let's go four, three, two, one. 
We heard some beeps confirming the password change, and we'll push pound to exit. So 1234 was the old password. Now it does nothing, so we'll try 4321. That's now the new password. To change the admin password, we start with pound 881122 to get into programming mode. We'll push zero for that option. And to change this password, you have to type in the password twice. So we'll choose a six digit number, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The three beeps at the end means it's confirmed. And that's our new password. So we'll exit out of that. So if we try 881122, it does nothing. But now if we try our new password, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, we're now in programming mode again. So that is how you do that. So let's just change the password back to one, two, three, four. So three is the prompt for password change. So we'll type in one, two, three, four. We can see we've got a green LED. We'll exit out of this menu. And now we'll try one, two, three, four. And we have our password reset back to one, two, three, four. Our admin password is still set to one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see the green lights come on. We're now back in programming mode, but we just want to exit, so we'll push the pound again. And that's how you reset the admin password and the entry password, which can be whatever you want. The entry password is restricted to four digits. The admin password is restricted to six digits, but you're pretty much free to choose whatever you want. It doesn't have to stay the default.